Welcome to Escape in the Motor, hey? And today we're in Blackpool! Whee! This is about the fourth emergency vehicle that's turned up. This is how we like to roll. Don't overtake, and he overtakes. Well, our rig is slowly fading for some reason. It's a very, very busy place. Don't take your eyes off the road! Hello, and welcome to Escape in the Motorhome. My name's Daz, and this is B. We're a home education, home working family who recently bought a motorhome to go on great adventures. So join us as we take the family on some wild walks, some wild and not so wild camping, explore our surroundings and try new things whilst getting to grips with living and working in our new small space. We experience the highs and lows of motorhome life. And if you enjoy our channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. Good morning everyone from just outside Preston. I have to say, the Hunters has been a lovely, quiet space for mine. A little bit of bottle clinking earlier this morning, I suppose, it's a pub. But other than that, us and this van over here had a rather pleasant night's sleep. Anyway, kids are almost ready to go, so let's head off. Well, sometimes when you're in a rush, this is how we like to roll. Hello, someone ordered water. Without a campsite to help top up our water, we had to buy it from the supermarket. This meant we were washing up and brushing our teeth with mineral water. We've gone from down here, stayed overnight in Warwickshire. And we stayed overnight very close to Stafford, well actually Stone. And we've stayed overnight in Preston. And now we're going to drive to Blackpool. Come on, where are we? Blackpool Tower! This could be the Champs-Élysées. We could be heading to the Eiffel Tower. But something tells me with the vegetation and the road signs that we are not in the middle of Paris. Welcome to Blackpool! Woo! That's a rock climbing wall. That's very interesting in the middle of a dual carriageway or wherever we are right now. So we're headed to Coach Park and Motown parking spot, which apparently is just two minutes away now. And for 24 hours, it cost the princely sum of £12.50, which we thought wasn't that bad, really. They do allow sleeping overnight. In bold, it states, but you can't put awnings, chairs, etc. outside. It's almost like someone's decided to compete with Blackpool Tower, but they haven't quite succeeded. Seasiders Way closed ahead. Car park closed for again. Well, these guys are brave enough to park here. Well, I'm slightly disappointed with the view, I must say. <laughs> you can tell we're in Blackpool. Motorhomes and carriages fit for Cinderella. Now I know my son is very keen on seeing the big one. And I'm not talking about, no. Well, as we say goodbye to Stampy there in the background, we're on our way to our first appointment at Blackpool Tower. And we've parked in the Gin car park just north of the tower. It's about a 25 minute walk. But with our kids, that's about times that by three. You'll recognize the Gin car park because it's a beautiful spitfire on the center. So I had to just check where I was walking in because I'm, I'm walking on tram lines. So I better be careful. Maybe that's the quick way to get to the tower. But since we've been sat on our bums most of today, leg power is going to be the, the best thing for us. And here comes the tram. The line dates back to 1885 and is one of the oldest electric tramways in the world. It runs for 11 miles and carries about 4 to 5 million people a year. And the great thing about this walk into town and this gin car park is our proximity to the sea. Hopefully, we'll see a beautiful sunset here this evening. Bodyboarding? Yeah, maybe. I'll just get a 10 mil wetsuit on. Thankfully, the weather was dry and the boys seemed to be enjoying their walk along the seafront. Just as we approached the tower though, everybody was looking up and not looking forward. <laughs> yeah, poor little Phoenix walked head on into a lamppost. But he recovered quickly enough to enjoy the grandeur of the entrance to the Blackpool Tower. Last 
That's so silly. Hold on tight. <laughs> <laughs> quite the afternoon. We've just got out of um, the Blackpool Tower dungeons and earlier on we had planned to go up the tower as you might be able to see behind me but we found ourselves with some time to kill so using our Merlin passes we were able to also access the uh, aquarium which is in the same area and we spent a wonderful hour or so inside there. Now I've never been to Blackpool but the tower is certainly a great thing to go up and, and there's signs, beautiful signs of old Victorian grandeur around and a sense of a real seaside town. It has all the cheesy seasideness that you could shake a stick of rock at. Um, but also in a big city, there are signs of businesses that have succumbed to economic changes uh, as every town and city grows and as online entertainment takes over. So it's a great place for those who like the typical seaside resorts. We're heading back to Stampy now and uh, for dinner and I've got to catch up on some work and then hopefully we're going to take the tram along the promenade to see the Blackpool illuminations. That's hard to believe we were up that tower. It looks so high but the illuminations are just beautiful. recycling for you. Someone's getting a bit of transport being taken to see the illuminations. Sadly I can't play the audio we recorded at this moment. It gave a real sense of the atmosphere down at the seafront. Unfortunately the music was so loud that YouTube's algorithm picked out the song that was playing and gave me a little warning. So I've typed in happy dance music into YouTube's free audio library and this is the first thing I've found. Enjoy! The first electric illuminations were introduced 15 years before the tower at a time when people were still using candles in their homes and people have been dazzled by them ever since. Well, we came to see the lights and we've seen the lights. They're all down the street. I'd say it's a weird place full of a lot of weird characters and a lot of weird smells. I'm sure there's loads of really nice bits, we just haven't seen all of them just yet. In that case, we'll have to come back. This is about the fourth emergency vehicle that's turned up. As there seems to be... Uh, there's three fire engines, guys. Three fire three engines. Three fire engines, engines a... one unmarked police car. There was an ambulance. Something... Like the whole building's been evacuated. Something going on here at the old Metropole. Indy seems to think it looks smoky in the bottom part of the... Hotel. Oh. Really? It's poor people all out on the seafront all of a sudden. It's like our motel. I think the smoke alarm goes off about four times a day. Well, let's hope they all get back in before bedtime. If they can get to bed with the disco going on down there opposite the tower. So all in all, an interesting place. Somewhere I think we've only just scratched the surface of. So we'll have to maybe 
come back next time we're passing. B loves it. B I love the lights. B loves, B loves, B loves a bit of bling and a bit of scissors sisters. I love the music and I love the lights and I feel like we've only seen about a quarter of them. I and mean, you'd never see anything like this until Christmas time. Um, yeah, in other towns. In some of the big major yeah. cities, not even in London. So I loved it and I thought the tower illuminations were beautiful. Yeah. I thought it was really cleverly done. And I've seen them, the illuminations at the Eiffel Tower um, and I thought these were just as beautiful. Well, sorry it's so dark you can't see yeah. us. There's almost no illuminations here, how ironic. Let's get back and check that we're not on fire. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night, folks. Good morning, everyone. It's just gone seven in the morning. This is an interesting place to park. I think I heard the last tram going by at about half past midnight and the first one at at least just before six this morning. In terms of location, it's not a bad place, but in terms of a quiet night, it's now just gone seven. It's like a motorway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, very busy place. There's lots of people trying to get somewhere, whether it's on tram or truck or car. Apparently the seafront is the best way to do it. Yeah, it's a proper thoroughfare here. Yeah. So besides the rush hour traffic at 7.20 in the morning, this is the scene that greets us. Perhaps an outgoing tide. Oh, some fishermen. And the pier in the distance. Uh, now I did read that these public toilets, just opposite where we're parked, are open 24 hours, but they are chargeable. Gin Square, or to be fair, hmm, Gin Square. It sounds like the kind of place we would like to hang out. The only other problem with this particular Gin Square car park is there isn't a flat parking space that I can see out of all the parking spaces. So the one we originally tried by the football club was probably a better choice. There were just those signs that said there was, it was closed for an event, but we saw from the top of the tower, same car park with three or four motorhomes in uh, at that point. So we probably could have stayed there the night. The slope made a small bit of difference uh, with our feet higher than our heads and all the water that we had left running to one side of the tank. So then we had to go and buy more water to counterbalance that. Yes, water has been another feature of this trip as it so often is. Well, our rig is slowly fading for some reason. Thank goodness we're going home today. Yeah, we're going home today, but uh, as you can see, our little inverter it kicks in, gives a little flurry of power to uh, trying to charge Indy's laptop ready for a lesson this morning. So we've installed the software we need on the tablet, which we can charge up to 12 volt, but I fear my car battery is uh, running low. Well, this bit of kit is deciding to give up on us. When we get back, I'll charge the battery and we'll give this another shot. We said our goodbyes to Blackpool and headed off. It took an hour to drive to Manchester and the Trafford Shopping Centre, where we were able to use our Merlin passes for two more attractions. Destination Lego Discovery Centre for my two mini explorers while Indy's in English class. that Daz went on with Indy two days ago. <gasps> and a beautiful model of Alton Towers. Well, we've never been to the Trafford Centre, but we're here on our Merlin Pass adventure. 
to visit another sea life centre. I feel like we've just stepped into a palace. Yeah, it's awesome. Aha! I spy a Sea Life Centre gift shop. Oh, and there's the entrance there. Well, we're really early, so we're... let's find money. Sit with. I should sit with the police really, that's probably safer. Okay, you ready to start then? Will it stay up, Brian? Oh no! Ah, oh, sturdy structure then, Etty. The rain marked the end of another busy day. It was time to eat and then set off for our five hour journey home. Oh, these conditions are just dangerous babe, don't overtake. And he overtakes. Sorry, There's no going, rush. This guy here is going slower than the lorry in the snow lane. I just hate rain and we're in a heavy vehicle. Everything feels fast in a big motorhome. Don't take your eyes off the road. I don't trust anybody else. You steady, trust me. Slow and steady wins the race and doesn't die. While I'm driving, my brain's been ticking away, adding up some of the numbers. About 150 pounds worth of fuel. We've added about 32 litres of mineral water to our tanks. We visited seven Merlin attractions, clocked up 600 miles, but only spent £12.50 on accommodation. Yes, all in all, it's been a very busy road trip, discovering the beauty of Alton Towers and the history and diversity of Blackpool. Even out of season, it's a very busy and interesting town. We'll have to come back here next summer and see how different it is. For now, thanks for joining us on our road trip and until our next escape, thanks for watching.